dear students today we can go through some substitute problems related to capacitance really it will help to do the problems in your board examination the first question when 10 raised to 12 electrons are transferred from one conductor to another a potential difference of 10 volt appears between the conductors calculate the capacitance of the two conductor system here in this question it is given the how many electrons are transferred the potential difference are given then we know the simple concept as charge is equal to z into v so the capacitance is q by v but here the number of electrons are given then by using the condensation principle you can substitute as ne by v the potential so you can substitute and here as a tens rise to 12 as the number of electrons the electronic charge by 10 and you get the answer as 1.6 in the 10 rise to minus 8 farad second question calculate the capacity of a sphere of radius 10 km look the expression the capacitance of a spherical conductor you know 4 pi epsilon 0 into radius we know the value 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 as 9 into 10 raised to 9 so we can substitute for 4 pi epsilon 0 as 1 pi 9 into 10 raised to 9 into the radius as a 10 km so 10 into 10 raised to 3 so you get the answer as 1.1 into 10 raised to minus 6 farad the third question a parallel plate capacitor has plate area 25 square cm and a separation of 2 mm between the plates the capacitor is connected to a battery of 12 volt we have to find the charge on the capacitor And the second one if the plate separation is decreased to 1 mm here it is given as 2 mm but it is decreased to 1 mm then find the extra charge given by the battery to the positive plate please read the questions carefully in the first question we have to find what is the charge on the capacitor simple relation c into v but we know c is what epsilon 0 a by d into v epsilon 0 8.85 into 10 raise to minus 12 into area it is given as 25 into 10 raise to minus 4 into the potential as 12 volt by the separation as 2 mm you get the answer as 1.35 into 10 raise to minus 10 coulomb in the second part if the plate separation is decreased to 1 mm then find to the extra charge given see here the plate separation is decreased to half so we know the expression for the capacity as epsilon 0 a by d d become d by 2 so the capacity become twice therefore the charge q dash is equal to c dash v again become twice therefore extra charge become q dash minus q 2q minus q that is q so we get the answer as 1.35 into 10 raised to minus 10 coulomb look at the very important extra question good aspect calculate the capacitance of a spherical capacitor consisting of two 
concentric spheres of radii 0.5 meter and 0.6 meter the material filled in the space between the two spheres has a dielectric constant of 6 look the figure a center sphere got the radius a and another shell with b radius and the outer layer is earthed that is called a spherical capacitor if a and b are the corresponding radii the capacitance can be derived to the formula c equal to 4 pi epsilon 0 k into ab by b minus a a good equation c equal to 4 pi epsilon 0 k into ab by b minus a so already you know 4 pi epsilon 0 is 1 pi 9 into 10 raised to 9 into the dielectric constant as 6 the inside radius as 0.5 the outside as 0.6 so 0.5 into 0.6 by b minus a 0.6 minus 0.5 and you get the answer 2 into 10 raised to minus 9 farad so the coming questions are based on some circuit analysis so please go through the questions carefully here the question find the charge appearing on each of the three capacitors shown in figure in order to find that at first you should convert reduce this circuit into a single capacitance so for that here see if you give a charge here it must move here and divided into b and c so b and c are parallel so it becomes so clear so b and c are the parallel capacitors and hence the resultant become their sum capacitance of c plus capacitance of b become 4 plus 4 so it become a single one then that capacitance is in series with the 8 look the steps already said b and c are parallel we get the answer for 8 microfarad but a the first capacitor and this 8 mu of r in series they have got the same value so c by 2 4 microfarad so we can easily to find the total charge that is the capacitance into potential so 4 mu of into 12 so we get the answer 48 micro coulomb and this is the charge on a and also on the combination of b and c as b and c are equal the total charge is shared equally therefore the charge on b is equal to charge on c so we get the answer the total 48 micro coulomb by 2 so 24 micro coulomb so that is the charge flows through the capacitors b and c a good aspect the next one a simple question three capacitors of 1 microfarad 2 microfarad and 3 microfarad are joined in series first then in parallel calculate the equivalent capacities in the two cases you know for series combination So one by C one plus one by C two plus one by C three, one by one plus one by two plus one by three. So we can combine together two plus one three by two plus one by three. So three into three nine plus two by six equal to eleven by six. So we get the value for the capacitance in series equal to six by eleven mu. You know, for the parallel network we can add it together. So one plus two plus three equal to six mu. So their division, you get the answer one by eleven. A simple concept. See, look the very important questions. Calculate the equivalent capacitance between the points P and Q. 
it is given c1 equal to c2 equal to c3 equal to c all the three capacities are equal we can done it so easily at first you have to number it as 1 2 3 4 etc and here keep in mind these are the capacities and they are connected by copper wires actually so its resistors are assumed to be zero so you just connect them so i am taking 2 and 3 initially c p this point this corner this corner this con corner three all are the same points but they are spread like this as a wire so you can take that one point to three so that capacity become parallel to c2 similarly c3 and 4 for this corner this corner this point four point is equivalent to 2 and hence you can take this one to this side so this become qn and this become p so the three uh, capacitors are in parallel you get the answer as a 3c and here find the capacitance of the combination shown in figure a between a and b so here look the figure we have to find to between a and b here 2 mf 1 mf so we can begin from the left side the process is step wise like this one at first look carefully here we can easily say this 2 and this 2 mf are in series so you can just find their effective capacitance we get c by n 2 by 2 1 mf but that 1 mf is parallel to gh so 1 mf parallel to 1 mf we get the answer yes 2 mf but that 2 mf is series to this 2 mf so we get the resultant as 1 mf so that 1 mf is parallel to eh then we get the answer 2 mf but that 2 mf is a series to 2 mf so we get 1 mf but that 1 mf is parallel to 1 mf so 2 mf but 2 mf is series with 2 so the result and become 1 mf but as a subject question you have to go with these steps one by one so we get the answer as 1 mf so easy question but keep in mind if we just connect the resistors in series the effective resistance is r1 plus r2 plus r3 but the case is entirely different with the capacitors they have to take the sum of the reciprocal so keep in mind while considering the capacitors in parallel we have to take cp is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 that is a very important concept then we are waiting a very good question number 9 four capacitors are connected look here the three points are there a b and d it is given that c1 is equal to 3 mf and c2 c3 c4 are 9 mf three questions are waiting the first one determine the equivalent capacitance between a and b so change the circuit with respect to a and b so this is one lead and this is one lead so here c2 c3 is 4 r in series and then that combination is parallel with the c1 if a 4 volt battery is connected between a and b then how much energy will be stored if the battery is connected between a and d what will be the total charge stored see the question simple concept after reading question at first you have to do it yourself then check the answer that is that may be the correct method see 
as we said earlier c2 c3 c4 in series so we can easily find c by n 9 mf by 3 so 3 mf but it is parallel to c1 so we get the answer 6 mf here the potential difference applied across that a and b so the charge q is equal to c into v so c we already get it 6 mf into the potential applied as for so the charge become 24 micro coulomb now the question if we connect between a and d how much charge is stored so here c1 and c4 in series so you can take the result and value effective value but here 2 and 3 again series we get the effective value but the two ends are in parallel so you get the value 27 by 4 mf so we get the charge stored as q is equal to c into v so we get the answer so in 2 and 3 we have to find the charge not energy so we get the result so it's a very good question a previous year question a good aspect it is important for our uh, board exam also two parallel plates p q r s are kept distance d apart area of each plate is a the space between them is filled with the dielectric slabs of identical size having dielectric constants k1 k2 k3 respectively then the capacitance of the capacitor is so this uh, lead so here the three materials are there k1 k2 k3 so the current is coming the charge is coming from this one and it is splits into three so, and hence we can take it as a pakka parallel network but keep in mind here and this material got the k3 value good but the area cross section is limited to a by 3 but the separation is constant d and that's the case for 3 the material is different the middle one has k2 the last one has k1 so three capacitors are in parallel so the effective capacitance is c1 plus c2 plus c3 so epsilon 0 a by d here a is a by 3 by d into k1 so you get the answer the questions may change we can fill like this one at that case you have to connect them as in series so the same procedure you have to do number 11 a good question the plates of a parallel plate capacitor have an area of 90 square centimeter each and are separated by 2.5 mm the capacitor is charged by connecting it to a 400 volt supply how much electrostatic energy is stored by the capacitor simple data everything is there so we can use the relevant relation as u is equal to half cv square epsilon 0 a by d 4 c So you just substitution half into epsilon zero eight point eight five into ten raised to minus twelve. The area is ninety into ten raised to minus four. The potential four hundred square by two point five into ten raised to minus three. So you get the answer two point six into ten raised to minus six joule. Look the question number twelve. A parallel plate hundred mF capacitor is charged to five hundred volt. If the distance between its plates is halved, what will be the new potential difference between the plates, and what will be the change in the stored energy? See, it is given d dash is d by two. The separation is half, so easily we can say the capacitance become double. Then the charge is nothing but equal to c dash v dash. It must be equal to c v. Therefore, we dash take the value as a 500 by 2, so 250 volt. The initial kinetic initial energy stored is half C V square, and the final energy is half into the capacitance 2 C into V dash square. So you just take the difference. You get the 6.25 joule.
Number four. A 900 PF capacitor is charged by 100 volt. First question, how much electrostatic energy is stored by the capacitor? The second aspect is good. The capacitor is disconnected from the battery and connected to another 900 PF capacitor. How much is the electrostatic energy stored in the system? So you know the first case U1 equal to half CV square. All the data are here. You get the answer. But on connecting to another 900 PF capacitor, so the charge is shared equally. So Q dash become Q by 2. The potential become V by 2. So the total charge of energy of this system become U2 equal to the two capacitors. So 2 into half into Q dash V dash. So we get the answer. So this is a very important concept. On connecting to another 900 PF, the charge is shared equally. Next question number 14. Two condensers A and B have capacities in the ratio 2 is to 3. A is given some charge which it shares with B. Compare the total energy of A and B with the ener initial energy of A. Compare the total energy of A and B with the initial energy of A. So here it is given C1 by C2 as a 2 by 3. So we can take a C1 is equal to 2C and a C2 equal to 3C. Let Q be the charge given to A. Then the initial energy of A is half Q square by 2C. When A shares with B, the common potential can be easily find out as Q by 5C. So the total energy of A and B. So U2 by U1. So we get the answer as 2 by 5. The last question. But it is a very important question. A dielectric slab of thickness 1 cm and a dielectric constant 5 is placed between the plates of parallel plate capacitor of plate area 0 0.01 m square and separation 2 cm. Calculate the change in capacity on introduction of dielectric. What would be the change if the dielectric slab were contacting? So good aspect. The students please try to solve it. Then if you have any doubt, then we can solve in the next class. So if you take air as the dielectric, you can easily find the value for the capacitance as epsilon 0 a by d and you get the value. But if t thickness of dielectric is introduced, the equation becomes epsilon 0 a by d minus t into 1 minus 1 by k. You get the value 7.375 to 10 raised to minus 12. But with the contacting slab, the equation changes d minus t on the denominator. You get the value. So the question is, what is the change in capacitance when dielectric is introduced? So you just take the difference. And during the conducting slab introduction, so you have to take the difference between this and this. So you get the answer. So try to do maximum problems. You can get maximum marks in board exam and to entrance exams. Thank you.